lands of men will never be safe from the scourge of the North. Barbaric warriors pour forth from their twisted wastelands to wage war against those who inhabit the lands to the south. At their head march unholy champions of chaos, and monstrous aberrations advance with them, proof that they are truly the favorite of the Dark Gods. For the warriors of chaos, there is no greater glory than to become recognized by the Dark Gods. Agravax the Furious is a champion of chaos favored by Korn. He willingly walks a road to prove that he is a true champion of chaos. With ever greater feats of slaughter, Agravax captures the notice of Korn. But to fulfill his destiny and reach the ultimate prize, he marches south where fresh victims await. At his side, legions of damned warriors march and make the ground tremble, some of them to satiate their thirst for battle, and some others as followers that Agravax has claimed as his own. After emerging victorious from multiple duels with other aspiring but less fortunate chaos champions. Dragon Ogres also march south with a host of Chaos. These are immortal beings who can only die in battle. Monsters that rouse themselves only in the name of destruction. Mutant Beastmen advance with a dark host, their drooling mouths full of sharp teeth, hungry for enemies. All these twisted creatures with their fury barely contained. An army led by Karl Franz marched forth to meet the Dark Invaders. Two towns had already been consumed by chaos, and the things that happened in those places were unnameable. The Emperor swore to protect the lands of the Empire and beyond from the upcoming Horde. Karl Franz sent messengers to Bretonia and the World's Edge Mountains, requesting his allies for help in his time of need. Understanding the gravity of the situation, and without hesitating, the Dwarves in Bretonia also joined forces with the Empire. Lord Thomas Le Burger was in charge of the Bretonian force. A small portion of the army would support the main battle line, while the Bretonian cavalry would advance through the woods in an attempt to outflank the armies of darkness. Gindrick Heavybreaker was in charge of the hardy warriors sent to reinforce the center and the right flank of the forces of order. What they lacked in numbers, they more than compensated for by the matchless quality of their weapons and armor. Their martial prowess and sheer determination was to be tested to the limits in the upcoming battle. They were all determined to stop the Chaos Force from advancing further, and they would meet Agravax the Furious and his host on the battlefield. At the sight of the Dark Host emerging from the dense forest, Karl Franz and company truly realized the size of the Chaos Threat. Along the lines of order, many men shuddered at the sight of such menacing enemies. But the heroes of the forces of order were unperturbed. As generals and commanders, it was their duty to show nothing but confidence in the face of such odds. Their men were counting on their leaders to guide them to victory. Bretonian light cavalry engaged in a skirmish to slow down the assault and do some damage. Artillery fire from the forces of order crashed on the massed ranks of chaos warriors and beasts. The black tide did not stop. The ground shook by the rampant chaos host 
and the skies above seemed to open in pain by their furious howls. Strange figures formed in the clouds, and the face of corn seemed to be staring down the battlefield, as if in anticipation of the carnage that was about to come. Dragon Ogres charged first into the front lines of the forces of order. The impact of her charge was brutal, and the sound of the ancient monsters clashing into the ranks of men was deafening. All along the assembled battle line, the sound of clashing steel, broken bones, and screams could be heard. I will smash and not stop! Into my hammer is found! This is the new pact I made to the dark powers! A two-headed dragon, full of corrupting horns and fangs of steel, reached the main battle lines of the defenders. His maws poured corrosive gas onto the ranks of human soldiers and dwarfs alike. The formidable Ironbreaker regiments of the Dwarves were armed to the teeth and were tough as nails. They were holding the line against the brute force of the Dragon Ogres, Corn Warriors, and Beasts alike. The followers of Chaos whooping and screaming at the terror and murder they created. The Dwarves, stubborn and strong in arms and at heart, returned in kind the devastating blows against the Ogres. They knew they had to hold the line, for if they failed, the forces of order would quickly fall into madness. They fought with disciplined fury and the implacable stubbornness which their race is famous for. I promised the Renmir there'd be a mighty tally, and I ain't one for breaking such an oath! So come on, let's have them! Hell cannons were firing across the battlefield and were causing heavy casualties on the front lines. The corn gores and warriors of chaos near the devastating explosions screamed and fought with frenzy when spilled with blood. They attacked without heed of their own defense. They were a mass of mutant creatures snapping in fury as they sought to tear their foes apart. The dwarves' gyrocopters flew dangerously above and beyond the front lines trying to assess the true force of the warriors of chaos, and trying to cause damage wherever they could. Amidst the carnage, a greater demon of corn was invoked and manifested in the middle of the mayhem. The blood flowing on the battlefield was enough to summon such a mighty creature. The beast was vast in stature. It wielded a giant, terrifying weapon that thirsted for blood. None could stand before it. The assault was in full swing, and although the defenders were fighting hard, it could only be a matter of time until they fell before the vast strength of the Chaos Horde. In the middle of the battlefield, the lines of order began to break. The overwhelming strength and fury of the Dragon Ogres were opening holes in the disciplined ranks of Empire soldiers and armored dwarves. The corn gores attacked with unrelenting fury against the assembled lines of defense. The artillery was dangerously within reach of the enemy. In that moment, Britonia's main army came in. The battle pilgrims charged to reinforce the main battle line while the main cavalry force emerged in the nearby woods. 
their colorful banners lifted high for everyone to see. Their positioning would take the forces of chaos from the rear. At last, there was a glimmer of hope. I gave my body, heart, and soul to the lady whom I seek. No plea for help shall find me wanting. No obstacle will stand before me. With the sound of rolling thunder, the knights pounded across the field. Clods of muddy earth were thrown up in their wake as they advanced. The veteran Pretonian knights attacked the Hell Cannons and their crews, rendering them unusable after a few minutes of battle. More cavalry charged into the backs of the massed ranks of Chaos Warriors. The many lances of the knights punched through the warriors' backs and chests, with the full weight of the knight and horse behind it. Lord Thomas charged Agravax as they engaged in a deadly duel in the middle of the battlefield. Soon enough, the two-headed dragon moved to aid Agravax, and the noble lord was forced to flee, wounded. The main lines were all but broken, and amidst the chaos of battle and the thousands of disconcerting sounds, the men of the Empire in Bretonia began to falter and lose ground. They were being pushed back in the middle, but were gaining enough time for the dwarves to rally and counterattack. Carl Franz and Gingrich Heavybreakers stood their ground, surrounded by their most loyal men and captains. They were a small ray of light in the midst of darkness. Their weapons rose and fell, killing with every blow and fighting with exemplary majesty and ability. They kept on slaying monsters and warriors of corn, but were also being overwhelmed. On the right flank of the forces of order, the Beastman Chieftain was defeated by the Grail Knights of Bretonia. And thanks to the stubbornness of the Dwarves, the lines on that flank were still somewhat in place. Meanwhile, Lord Thomas had managed to escape from Agravax and the Chaos Dragon, but was badly injured. His mount could still fly, so he flew back into what remained of the forces of order lines and began shouting lines of courage and directions to the troops. At the sight of their leaders fighting without stopping, despite the circumstances, and with the beastmen chieftain slain, the men lifted their hearts and weapons in defiance. The dwarves began to reform and take control of the right side of the battlefield, and pushed to the center. 
Carl Franz engaged the Great Redeemer in a titanic duel. Sparks flew from the ancient weapons, and the cries of anger and despair from all that looked filled the air. After a lengthy engagement, the Emperor was wounded and was quickly taken by Deathclaw to a relatively safe place away from the battlefield. A small retinue of men guarded their leader as they tended to his wounds. Before the men could panic from the sight of Karl Franz falling, Royal Hippogriff Knights and Grail Knights charged against the giant Chaos Dragon and the Greater Demon. Imperial Demogriff Knights and the surviving Bretonian Cavalry quickly joined the fray. When the Chaos Dragon and the Greater Demon were banished, Agravax kept fighting, enraged that he had victory within his grasp, but his glory was being taken away. Knowing that to disappoint Korn would mean a more torturing punishment than falling on the field of battle, he kept fighting with Berserker Fury, screaming for Korn's favor until his last breath. By nightfall, the screams of the dying had been drowned by the feasting calls of the carrion creatures. The hand of chaos has cast a vast, impenetrable shadow upon the world, and it cannot be banished or defeated. Chaos is an ever-growing danger, and more forces will soon be marching south. The princes and lords of the world will gather their armies, but it will avail them not. For how long can they survive? On this channel we are putting together narrative total war cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also directly support the channel through Patreon, find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button to be the first to watch the next video. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.